Hi folks, welcome to your uh, lesson this week. So today we're going to be looking at exercise 15 through to 17. Now, uh, there's a, a new instrument that I'm going to show you, and it's called the Temple Blocks. Uh, these are granite blocks, but uh, sometimes you'll see Temple Blocks, they're kind of made out of wood, and uh, they've got a bit of paint on them, usually red. Um, uh, you can use, they're great, um, but a lot of the times, we use the granite blocks. They really cut through, they're very loud, um, and they are also um, quite durable. Um, awesome. So they are uh, mounted, pitched, uh, uh, kind of like wood blocks actually. If you have a look at them, you'll notice that they are hollowed out. That way they can create that loud res resonant uh, sound. Uh, when you have a temple block part, uh, my well, when I have a temple block part, a granite block part, it depends on what else I'm playing. But generally speaking, I will uh, uh, use soft to medium rubber mallets, okay? Uh, rather than drumsticks. Now, having said that, sometimes your conductor or the music calls for using drumsticks on, on the temple block. Sometimes you'll have, in your music, it'll ask you to use dishcloths on the temple block. I don't know, whatever. Use, uh, flick the temple... No, I'm just kidding. Um, I haven't had to flick a temple block yet. It might hurt. Um, but if there's nothing mentioned there, if it just says play the temple blocks, my go-to response would be, oh, get me some soft to medium rubber mallets. Okie dokie. Um, these particular mallets used to be marimba mallets. Uh, but they've just all wound and worn down, and I just use the rubber part on the inside, seem to get a good sound. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, they're fun. When I play them, I play towards the edge. Okay? On the top. Alright? And that's about it, really. If I played up there, you don't really get any sound, so pretty straightforward. You just have to pick up some mallets and have a go and find where the sweet spot is, okay? Okay, so, just messing around. They're, they're super fun. Uh, be careful, they can be super annoying. <laughs> so if you're just banging away on the temple blocks when everyone's getting the instruments out, you might add to the stress levels of your conductor. Okay, Maybe that's something that you want to do. Maybe you're not getting along with your conductor and you want to push their buttons. Well then the temple blocks are for you. Okay, uh, so we're going to do uh, number 15. If you're at home and you don't have temple blocks, uh, which is probably most of you, um, if you're at home and you do have temple blocks, wow, congratulations. Um, but what I would suggest is just, you know, set up three different, uh, you know, sounds. You can get the plastic bowls from the kitchen and turn them upside down and set them up. Uh, and you could just have three different parts on your bed. You're not getting much sound, but at least you're getting the motion. Um, you could use your drum kit. Okay, which you know, you can use your toms on your drum kit, which should you know, like huge temple blocks. Uh, uh, but just give it a go. Um, so, um, I'm going to, for starters, just use the top three for exercise 15. We'll play that one first. Oh, let me get it up. I haven't got it up ready. Silly. Oh, yes, I have. No, I haven't. Here we go. Exercise 15. Temple blocks. Okay, 
So uh, that's pretty straightforward. Have a go. Um, at, at school, if you've got some temple blocks at school, you know, give them a go. Now remember, soft and medium mallets. Hello darkness, my old friend. Uh, try not to drop your mallets. Uh, and uh, unless otherwise stated. So if it says use some drumsticks, well then I guess you use some drumsticks. If your conductor says, oh I'd rather a different sound, well then be prepared to change your sticks or mallets and try and give them a different sound. Anyway, um, put those there. Okay, let's try the snare drum part now. Here we go. Number 15 on snare drum. Okay, so that's really an exercise in restraint. Do not play loud. Uh, it's, and it's actually really fun to play rolls nice and soft. I usually go up towards the top of my drum. You'll notice you get just a thinner sound. Okay. It's quite bouncy up there to you. It's, it's more forgiving up there, so it's easy to play um, uh, uh, softly. Okay, let's move on. Smooth move. Alright, lots of rolls here, folks. And I hope we've remembered how to do our rolls. Remember, generally speaking, you're going, your rolls will use a, a 16th note primary stroke. So if I'm counting uh, in number 16, it would be 1 e ender, 2 and 3 and. Okay, and that 1 e ender, where the roll is, will be the buzzes, okay? All right, let's give it a go. Number 16. say it was written for the percussionists. Smooth move. Maybe it's about getting smooth rolls. Alrighty. So just work on those rolls. Uh, trying to get them smooth. You, you know, it's a really good practice to get that happening. I like to uh, pretend I'm at the beach in general. No. I like to uh, pretend I'm at the beach and I'm trying to get create the sound of the waves coming in and the waves going out. So I'm, as the waves are out, I'm rolling towards the edge of the drum, and as they come into shore, I move my sticks into the center, and I go back out again. a good way to pretend that you're at the beach without having to put sunscreen on, okay, and, and you don't get sunburned. Unless, of course, you're practicing outside. Put some sunscreen on. Alright, let's move to number 17, uh, shifting gears. Okie dokie. Watch your rhythm in this and make sure you get that paradiddle at bar 3 and alternating flams in the second line. Okie dokie. Here we go. Just use this as a reference. Uh, now go away and you do your, your practice and try and get um, uh, this stuff happening. 
And then when you're ready, you can practice along with me again with this video. You don't have to watch it just once, you can watch it all the time if you like. Um, or you can then, uh, when you're ready, practice along to your backing tracks. Uh, alrighty, catch you later, alligators.